problems. Fear, frustration, crippling, economic loss, devastating disease. Dramatic situation, the abortion, enigma, disaster, disappointment. It seems like the virus is often one step ahead of us. When you think that you know everything about peers, you have peers again. PR r s 관련 해서 짧은 이제 영상을 보셨는데요. 얼마나 경제적으로 큰 피해를 주고 있는 질병인지 한번 느껴봤던 것 같습니다. 아무래도 여러 가지 이제 그 후반부에 인터뷰도 나왔는데 바이러스가 항상 우리를 한 발짝 앞서서 가는 것 같다. 이런 표현이 좀 받았는 것 같습니다. 그래서 지금 이제 이반디아즈 교수님 앞으로 모셔서 어떻게 이렇게 한 발짝 앞서 있는 바이러스 또 한번 쫓아가볼지 한번 경청해 보도록 하겠습니다. 평가수 부탁드립니다. 네. 우리 답변은 안녕하세요. 음, 저는 이반 임디입니다. 음, 감사합니다. To, to, for, for, be, for be here. I would, I would uh, like to say a special thank, 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 uh, thanks to HIPRA team for uh, held this seminar and all the week that we are sharing a lot of knowledge here in, in Korea. Okay, well, I am I'm a researcher at an uh, institution in Barcelona, a CRESA, a research center for animal health. And at this moment, uh, we are a member of the uh, World Organization for Animal Health Reference Center for Classic and Swine Fever, and also a collaborating center of the World Organization for Animal Health for research and control of emerging and emerging diseases in Europe. In our facilities, we have biosecurity level three facilities uh, uh, to have animals and also uh, labs inside it, so we can uh, work with uh, highly pathogenic, uh, pathogenic uh, um, uh, agents such as uh, influenza, um, uh, avian influenza, um, uh, coronavirus, uh, pers highly pathogenic pers virus strains, etc. Okay, at, at, um, you, you can you can uh, check all our our studies at this. Uh, direction at this web page but uh, the the final objective of our group is to improve our knowledge on particular viruses especially classic and swine fever virus influenza virus and pers virus and also pdb in order to uh, improve the the vaccines to to develop new vaccines against these uh, pathogens and also to develop new uh, diagnostic tests well uh, among our major contributions uh, um, I think that uh, one of the most important as is that we demonstrated several years ago that the genetic similarity is not a good predictor to know the cross protective uh, against uh, PERS virus. Uh, I, I will show you later some, some data about it, but also we have demonstrated that different PERS virus isolates has, uh, different, have different immunity uh, properties and uh, also we have been working a lot uh, during last years uh, using bioinformatics, especially all related to next generation sequencing, to obtain the whole genome sequence of the of the PERS virus. Okay, let, let's start with the presentation uh, uh, that is entitled uh, "Good Practice to Improve Immunity Provided by Vaccines." And the th the first thing that we should ask ourselves is, what can we really expect from vaccines? Because, uh, as you know, the vaccines, especially for for PERS virus cannot protect against all the strains, so probably we need to improve their immunity uh, or at least to accompany the uh, vaccine with uh, other measures such as uh, management and biosecurity. Okay, we are, I am going to divide the, 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 this talk in five topics. Um, disease cost, secondary infections, genetic diversity, vaccine failures and, and just some slides about control. Uh, the first topic I know that it's not related to healthy or or, um, or, or immunology of, of the, or some of these topics, but I think that is very important because finally um, we have to decide to do some investments in the farms uh, in order to control especially pers virus. So it means that we need to uh, spend money 
and it's important to know uh, exactly what is the cost of the disease to know if these uh, measures are uh, worth or not. Let's see the first uh, topic. This is the cost, the economic losses due to PERS virus during our clinical outbreaks. We usually uh, use this parameter that is the cost per show present in the farm. So here in the, in the map we can see uh, the result of different studies made from, uh, performed uh, from different uh, teams in different countries, always during uh, a clinical outbreaks, okay? As you can see that more or less the average could be 200,000 wounds per show present in the farm during the clinical outbreak. And the cost in the, in the growing pigs, uh, it's uh, more or less estimated in uh, 17,000 um, uh, wounds and most of these uh, losses are due to the secondary infection as we, uh, we will uh, see later. Well, let's check one, one experiment, uh, very recent uh, study uh, done here in, in, in South Korea, where the researchers, where the researchers uh, evaluate the, the PERS uh, cost in a clinical outbreak uh, due to a PERS virus 1 uh, in, a, in a 65 uh, uh, so uh, farrow to nursery farm. And as you can see, the cost is very uh, high for all these parameters. And uh, finally, they estimate that the cost per show was higher than 200,000 uh, um, uh, wounds. So for this specific farm, it, it means almost 160 million wounds. So the quantity is very, very high. But also we have another situation where, where we can be losing uh, uh, money. That is, it's... Uh, this one, as you know, we classify the, the, the farms according to the PERS uh, status, uh, um, according to this parameter that is the viremia in newborn piglets. It means if we find the virus in the blood, in the newborn animals, we, uh, we uh, classify as positive, okay, as, as a positive and a stable. If they are not, uh, we, cl we can classify, classify this farm as negative or if there, has, there is some seropositive animals in other phases, we uh, could uh, uh, classify as positive stable. So in this, the last situation, um, uh, clinical signs can be uh, clear, but sometimes the clinical signs are not obvious. So even uh, with, with no obvious clinical signs, the economical losses can be very high. We estimated in some farms in Spain that it was more than 80,000 wounds per so present in the farm. The losses in growing pigs was uh, most related to secondary infections. Okay, uh, in the past we thought that um, uh, PERS virus 1 was mainly uh, related to uh, breeding herd, to uh, reproductive uh, problems in breeding herd. And uh, we thought that PERS virus 2 was related to both the breeding problems in reproductive, uh, reproductive problems in breeding herd and also respiratory and growing problems in uh, growing pigs. But now we know that it's not exactly the true because the, the variability of the virus is so high that we can find uh, both situation in both virus. So let me show you one, one, one clear case of a, a severe um, um, a strain uh, that we have now in Spain that it's called Rosalia. Okay, this is the scenario. This is uh, the peak census in, in, in Europe in the, in the, during the last year. As you can see, there are very high uh, density areas, especially in Spain. Uh, as you know, we are the largest producer uh, in, in Europe and also the third largest producer in the world after uh, China and United States. Okay, just for comparison, here there is uh, Catalonia, is my, my region, this is Spain, here is Barcelona, and uh, the Catalonia is three times smaller than South Korea, but we have seven million more pigs than your country. And the prevalence of PERS virus 1 is, is quite uh, high, more than 70% of farms are positive, and there are also some uh, PERS virus 2 circulating in, in, the, in the country. Well, and more importantly, we are um, importing right now uh, more than 4 million animals every year from the rest of Europe to growing uh, them. It means more than 300,000 uh, piglets every month. It's a huge quantity of animal. And 
This animal are only uh, evaluated uh, for classical and African swine fever because the only the only diseases that are mand mandatory to evaluate. So at the beginning of 2020, uh, someone import uh, um, infected animals with a virulent strain, first virus, uh, first virus one virulent strain, and we um, after the first of breaks we obtain the sample to evaluate to analyze and um, through the by the by the next generation sequencing we we obtain the uh, the whole genome sequence as you can see in the figure uh, more than 80% uh, uh, comes from an uh, italian strain that was already demonstrated to be very virulent into uh, in 2014 and the rest comes from other um, uh, european uh, strains okay what we know about this uh, strain First of all, as we can see, that it's a recombinant strain. Um, the dissemination inside our country has been very, very fast. In fact, more, uh, more sequence strains correspond to Rosalia uh, uh, at this moment. We have, we have found a, a huge variability inside the group of Rosalia uh, isolations. And also, we have observed a high degree of recombination uh, between the uh, between uh, Rosalia and the local strains. Okay, let me show you now the, the impact in the farm, that they, I think that is the important point. Uh, here we have the, the pictures, the figures for a negative farm before the outbreak of, of, of uh, Rosalia, farm one, and in the second farm, uh, th this farm was uh, positive for Pers virus before Rosalia, and they were vaccinating the, the, the animals uh, during the before and during the outbreak, as you can see, the the outbreak lasts almost one year, and the percentage of uh, farrowing dropped almost twenty percent. The impact was quite important in the other vaccine in this farm farm two, but obviously uh, here the, the the vaccine was working a little bit, so the impact was lower than in the first uh, farm. In regards of the mortality in nurseries, uh, as you can see. If, before the, the emergency of Rosalia, the, the mortality nursery was uh, uh, more or less 2.5%, uh, but, but after the emergency of this first virus one virulent strain, it increased uh, to a mean of 16.4%, uh, okay, and during some weeks reached almost 50% of mortality. Okay, the impact was lower, but also very important in the vaccinated one. Let me show you now a picture of a uh, summary of, of, of uh, hundreds of, of farms. Um, this is the mortality, the mean of mortality that we have in nurseries and fattening peaks in 2020 before the emergency of Rosalia. And after the, the outbreaks uh, due to the, this viral Pierce virus one, uh, this percentage increased almost five points. Okay, what did this results mean in terms of uh, losses? And this is this result for me. It's quite interesting because uh, we are we calculated it, we estimated it uh, from different uh, uh, teams, from different researchers, and we obtain more or less the same result. The Rosalia, the economic losses due to Rosalia were more than uh, five hundred uh, thousand wounds per so present in the farm, and in, in some farms it uh, means almost one million of USA dollars. So it's quite clear that with the results that Pers virus one strain can also produce a huge impact in the, in the farms. Okay, it's a summary from this part. Um, it's, it's obviously that it's hard to control immunosuppressive diseases such as uh, Pers virus because and, and it, this, this kind of virus provoke a severe economic impact. In terms of clinical outbreaks, also in those farms, in those farms positive and stable that don't, doesn't have um, uh, uh, clear clinical signs because the emergency, the continuous expansion of the virus and the continuous emergency of new strains, some of them very virulent, and because the secondary infections. Okay, in my opinion, this, this, this uh, data is very important to keep all, uh, always in our mind because the economic data is our best uh, uh, tool for decision making. As I told you, one of the um, one of the most important causes of these uh, huge uh, losses are the secondary infections. 
So we are going to see right now uh, how the PERS virus interact with uh, other pathogens. This point is very important because controlling PERS virus, we can even control uh, bacterial diseases, as you will see. Okay, this is the, um, well, how the PERS virus increases uh, the emergency to other infections. And uh, we are going to see this now, and then we are going to, uh, uh, to see what's exactly the role of, of uh, PERS virus in the porcine respiratory disease complex. Okay, this is a typical picture of a lung from a healthy animal. Uh, as you can see, there, there is the, the typical structure of the alveoli in the, in the lung. So here there are enough space and the septa are very thick, so there can be uh, changes of cases for, for breathing. So please keep this, this uh, uh, picture on your mind and compare to this. This, uh, after the infection, uh, this lung suffer of interstitial pneumonia. And here there is, uh, the alveoli in the septa is uh, completely full of inflammatory cells, necrotic materia, etc. So um, obviously in this case, the animal has problems to, to breathe. Well, as you know, in the, in the lung, the very first line of defense are the macrophages. The macrophages has, uh, have several uh, functions, such as uh, the secretion of proteases of cytokines and also uh, as a phagocytic cell, uh, also kill bacteria, and during the immune response can play a role as antigen-presenting cell. So pers the target cell for PERS virus is, the, is this, this cell, the porcine alveolar macrophage, and the PERS virus uh, infection compromises their function in, in several um, uh, terms, uh, impairs the phagocytic function, impairs the secretion of cytokines, etc. And also, not only the, the, the effect of PERS virus infection is not only on, above, uh, on, on macrophages, but also or in other cells that are important in the immune response, such as natural killers or dendritic cells. So you can find in, in, the, in, uh, in the literature that there are several studies analyzing uh, how PERS virus increases the, the emergency and the severity of other uh, pathogens. Um, some of them virus, but uh, mainly uh, um, uh, bacteria, especially uh, as I, I'm quite sure that you have observed this in your farms, the um, increase of the severity of uh, Streptococcus suis and Glacerella parasuis. Para, para okay, also PERS virus in, uh, uh, play a very important role in the porcine respiratory disease complex. As you know, this complex is a sum of uh, different situations. First of all, we have a primary inf infection. Um, PERS virus in this case is one of the most important, but also we have the swine influenza and myc mycoplasma and less uh, frequent uh, PCV2 and, and now just disease virus. So in the presence of this primary agent, that PERS is one of the most important, and um, um, after uh, having a bad uh, situation uh, in terms of management or environment, such as overcrowding or continuous flow, there is an explosion of secondary infections, uh, most of them uh, bacteria. Well, it's clear that immunosuppressive, uh, immunosuppressive uh, diseases such as uh, PERS virus increase the, the emergency of other uh, infections. Uh, um, the main reason is that the target cell of PERS virus is the macrophage in the, in the lung. Also, it's important to, to remark that the PERS virus play an important role in, porc in porcine respiratory disease complex. And as you, you, we will see and we discuss later, uh, a PERS virus infection can also uh, induce vaccine failures. So obviously, uh, this, this situation, the infection of PERS virus and the emergency of bacterial complication make diagnosis, the diagnosis difficult and worsens the course of the infection. Okay, now we are going to talk a one, a, a, about one of the most important uh, vaccine, uh, cause of vaccine failures, but it's something that we cannot control, it's just something inherent, something intrinsic of the, of the virus. So uh, we are going to talk about the genetic diversity. This picture is quite nice. The, here we can observe the genome size for, for uh, several uh, types of, of viruses and bacteria uh, according to the mutation rate. So here they are classified uh, according to, this, uh, to both uh, uh, terms. And we can observe that PERS virus is more or less here. It means 
is a small uh, virus compared to other, but the mutation rate is very, very high, uh, probably one of the most highest in the, in the nature, uh, even much more than uh, influenza or uh, HIV in human. So what's the consequence of this uh, high genetic, uh, the, uh, the, uh, high mutation rate? Uh, the consequence is that there is a continuous expansion of the virus, uh, new uh, uh, strains emerge, uh, continuously, and some of them are very virulent, as you know, uh, some from the uh, belonging to the PERS virus 2 in, in North America and also in Asia, but also um, belonging to PERS virus 1, as I explained you, uh, Rosalia in Spain, but also uh, some of, of them in Italy, in Austria, and also in the uh, Western, in Eastern Europe. Well, why it, does it occur? Um, there are two major forces driving the genetic uh, diversity in, in this virus. The first one is the genetic drift. As, as we have observed in the figure, um, the PERS mutation rate is very high. Uh, it's calculated, it's estimated that more or less one every 1,000, 10,000 nucleotides. So as the virus is more or less uh, 15,000 uh, nucleotides, um, it means that virtually every new virus created, every, every new virus that is replicated in some one cell of the host, of the pig, is different from its parent. Okay, the second major force uh, driven the genetic diversity is the recombination. Recombination is the change uh, of the ma genetic bacteria, bacteria uh, between uh, two strains. In regards of genetic drift, we cannot do anything from a practical point of view because it's something inherent of the virus, but for, uh, to avoid or decrease the possibility of recombination, we can do some things in the field. So the longer the infection period and the higher viral loads, obviously the higher chances changes for a co-infection and a possible uh, recombination. So in this case, obviously we should uh, 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 use uh, vaccines with a short, uh, longer, uh, with a short um, excretion period. There are several studies uh, from uh, European researchers, from uh, American, from Asian researchers that uh, has uh, demonstrated that this phenomenon is, can be observed between field strains, between field strains of vaccines and between vaccines. So one of the measures that we could uh, apply to uh, reduce or avoid the recombination is to avoid simultaneous or immediately consecutive use of different live vaccines. And we will talk later about it, do not vaccinate infected animals. From a practical point of view, the, the worst uh, thing that can occur um, uh, in regards of recombination is that uh, it can occur in throughout the entire, the entire genome, but it's true that the hot spots are the NSP9 and OR5. So if we usually use uh, OR5 to, uh, uh, to sequence and, and to know uh, the origin of the virus, uh, we can uh, have mistakes interpreting the result because uh, there can be uh, recombinations inside the OR5, but also beyond the OR5. Okay, what's the most important consequence of the high genetic variability of this virus? Uh, obviously, the continuous expansion of the virus, but also uh, it means that the control is very difficult. And also, we know from several years ago, from more than 15 years ago, that the genetic, genetic similarity is not a good predictor to know the cross-protection among strains. So it means that we cannot use the genome sequence, neither OR5 or the whole genome sequence, to predict the level of protection. This is something that was already demonstrated uh, during my PhD, PhD thesis in Barcelona, so it means that uh, several years ago, and then uh, other researchers has already demonstrated the same in the United States or in Asia. So we cannot predict the protection that a particular vaccine will afford against a given strain that, that we have in our farm. This is the bad news, but the uh, good news is that, uh, that it's very important to remark that heterologous vaccines can provide protection as good as homologous one, and I'm going to show you some examples in regards of PERS virus 1 uh, vaccine against several strains of PERS virus 2. Okay, let's see the first example. This, this study was, was uh, done in... in